a farmer down the road, he did a talk and he said, cheap food is a moral issue. If you're not paying for it, someone is. Uh, and I would add, or something is, as in the environment. People have to stand up and become, you know, put a bit extra or value their food and what the food is doing to their health. If you took your health insurance premium that you paid for an average family of four and put that into paying for a better food, would you be doing a lot better for your health? I think so. We're Aoife and Joe. This is Eden and Aaron. Uh, we're a small family farm. So we've about three acres here. Well, we've about seven acres, but we're using three. The other is used for silage ground. My father is dairy and beef, so he's using that for silage and he's agreed not to put any chemicals on it. He can spread a bit of slurry, but that's fine. We're doing a market in Castle Bear from eight to four, and we're doing a farm shop on a Saturday morning from nine to 12. And we just started supplying super value with potatoes and a few other bits, kale and that kind of thing. We've been lucky, I think, Certain things have happened at the right time. Other growers have pulled out of super value. And at the, mar at the market stall, as I say, the grower pulled out, we, we walked in. And the box schemes is our other thing on a Tuesday. We're still fine tuning that. And uh, it's, it's finding how that works. I think for some people, a CSA for works that people sign up for a year, what we found was that the, the commitment people didn't want to commit to something like that. It's just difficult when when you're dependent on so many customers and then this week the, the, they're, they're all away on holidays. These times can, there can be many cancellations and the winter tends to be more steady because people are at school, families are at school. Uh, we put up this polytunnel in early spring this year but the storm took it down and we had to put it back up again and put the pallet windbreak up and few, still a few adjustments to stormproof it uh, and make sure and try and make sure that won't happen again but yeah you can't ensure polytunnels. We've been taking woofers for about two years now and they've been a great addition but yeah la labour is a huge it's just that growing organically is, is time consuming. We didn't expect to be this big. I think we just saw ourselves having like an acre and having a nice... I'm not going to say we thought it was going to be easy, but we probably thought that there would be less work in it than there is for sure. Um, it's been great sometimes it's been wonderful sometimes and lovely days do you know when after the winter and you, you're outside and you're working and you're like imagine being in an office now there's lots of moments like that uh there's lots of moments when we're looking at the weeds going we took on too much <laughs> it's too big we'll never get there and at moments like that we're glad we've got help did i mention it's been stressful sometimes <laughs> <laughs> we've had our days where we thought we'd never um managed to we'd have to abandon parts of the field that had so many weeds in them that we couldn't see ourselves getting through it um, and Joe had been getting a bit stressed for a few days we had no woofers and we were just by ourselves and we'd a baby you know we just had Owen actually yeah, we just yeah. had him like he was a few weeks old and then one day a bus or um, it wasn't a bus load it was a car Three cars. Three cars <laughs> pulled up and I thought, what's going on here? And all these school kids in uniforms got out and Joe gave them the tour. And by the end of it, he was like in great form again and really excited about what he was doing. And it's that reward, I think, of seeing how much the kids enjoy it and how interested they are. And it suddenly gives you, re-energizes re you and makes you think that mm -hmm. you're in it for... Yeah. I don't know, you're happy to be in it. You're happy to be in it. Yeah. What we'd hoped is see ourselves as getting the balance and everyone says no matter what business you, you're in, it will be, be it organic growers or whatever, if you're self-employed, the first few years everyone says is the hardest. We set ourselves up, we knew we were taking on a lot and we said we'll see how much we can manage this year and if we have to abandon bits of it that's fine. We did say that, mm -hmm. that this was our test to see what scale is manageable because when you start there's no way of knowing what, how much, many acres you can grow to make you enough to live off. 
there's two growers down the road who were on kind of this kind of scale. After they, they did about five, six years, and that was enough. They found enough. It's it's like you can feed off that feedback and, and people loving your produce and saying how important it is that you keep going for so long. But if if people aren't paying a fair price for your work, then in five or six years time you're going to be the same. I mean, we, you can learn how to be efficient and all that, but you're not a machine at the end of the day. And you need to be paid for your work. We need to, we need to be able to take a wage out of this business, which we look forward to doing one day. Yeah. Why are we glad we're in it now? Isn't there like a million more reasons than the reason we got into it? Yeah. <laughs> in the first place? Yeah, 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 that's it. Like, yeah. you start off with one reason and you realise... Mm. Your kids get to grow up in an organic farm with organic food. We get to make a life side out of it. We get to supply it to local people. That was your dream. That was what you said when we first went into it. You said Real food for local people. Yeah, you wanted to grow food and have it available locally.